want to talk to you about Kova and I want to talk to you about goalkeepers. One of the biggest surprises of preseason, I believe, was was Kova's shock performance against Leon. And as preseason has progressed, and obviously Kova didn't join the rest of the team in America for the tour, um, I, I can't stop thinking about what does this mean. Uh, and we've mentioned a couple of times. Uh, I think. Me and Adam mentioned this in our review, or I mentioned this in the review I did with Adam after the last game. Sometimes, when you have a player um, that you want to go out on loan, you might send the player that you rank higher out on loan and keep the one that you rank a little bit lesser because you think you can progress the guy that's going out on loan to a higher level, meaning that when he comes back from loan, he's more likely to take a first-team spot and a first-team place. Um, and this guy can just sit around here and be back up. Um, now, the example for that might be Kovar going on loan and Dean Henderson or Nathan Bishop sticking around. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a risk because that player can go out on loan, that player could get injured, the club that he goes to could fire the manager. With a goalkeeper, it's a bit different, but like you know, if, if you're a number 10, for example, and they get rid of the manager that plays with the number 10 and bring in one that doesn't, <laughs> you're fucked. So uh, there's a huge risk. Um, and I know for a fact about one Manchester United player that did go out on loan that had a 75-minute clause in his contract. Uh, I think he played the first two games, looked really well. Uh, the manager then got fired, and then he didn't fucking play again at that club, um, despite the clause that was in the contract. So... Um, careers can be made or broken on the back of those sorts of things so it's a massive gamble if you keep them around at the club and someone never gets injured and they never get to to go out and, and play you've hampered their development just as much as if they'd gone out on loan and under shit circumstances found them there or you can have what happened with Ashley Fletcher and Marcus Rashford Fletcher was certainly rated higher certainly as a striker at least uh, than Rashford was at the time but Marcus was on the spot he was the one that was in the squad. Martial gets injured. I think Zlatan and Rooney had also been injured, hence why we'd gone to our fourth choice striker. Marcus is on the, the guy on the spot. He takes his chance. He follows it up with a ch couple of chances against Arsenal. He makes himself a mainstay by the end of the season. I remember us wondering when Mourinho came in, is he going to keep Marcus Rashford around or is he going to send him out on loan? Obviously, he kept him around. He's now played hundreds of games for Manchester United and his, a career has been built. Ashley Fletcher has, has had a, quite a few clubs and, and certainly not hit the, the heights that Marcus has hit. Um, and that's just based on circumstance. So what Manchester United do with Kovar is fucking important. Now, I think Tom Heaton's sticking around um, to be number two this year behind Onana. And I think in Kovar, United have got three very, very reliable goalkeepers. And fucking Tom Heaton is a Premier League goalkeeper. You know, outside the top six... You can make a case for him starting for all of those other teams. And in, in the, the, the bottom half of the Premier League, he fucking starts for every single one of you. He's a great goalkeeper. Um, and, and what Kovar showed me on preseason honestly blew me away in the, the way he was playing out. We saw the clips and stuff of some of the stuff that he was doing out on loan at Spa, but the, the composure playing with United's defence, you're like, wow, what is going on here? In pre-season, obviously, the ideal uh, keeper is the one that gets the build out from the back. And we've seen the impact already with Onana playing, how good he looks and how good United look and how confident and comfortable we are with him in the mix. So a keeper that can play the same way, hence why we're looking at Suzuki, is going to be massive and integral for the games that Onana sits out. Um, Tom's not bad with his feet. Tom's more of... a uh, uh, a commanding box goalkeeper. He comes and claims for crosses. He's got excellent shot stopping. He's got a great physique on him. Um, and I think he's comfortable playing out. I don't think he's as comfortable as Anana. And I actually don't know if he's as comfortable as what I saw from Kova. Um, there was a real level of ability in that. Um, I, I think he's just an excellent bit of an all-rounder of a goalkeeper. Um, as we said, Kova looked unbelievable against Leon, And I think he's put his name in the mix. I think he's he's one that's done so well and his age profile like he is, he has to go out on loan. Because if he comes as Manchester United's number two and doesn't feature, he isn't developing. Tom's at a different stage of his career where it makes sense that he can be a number two. Kovar needs to go and get the experience of playing regular football week in, week out before he can come 
and be back up and maybe even during a few years challenge Onana for that first team spot. Um, but he was identifying the best option. He was playing accurate passes. He dealt with the the pressure and being pressed expertly. He looked unbelievable on the ball. I really did not know he had that in him. Um, and in those two preseason games, he averaged 94.15 pass completion, uh, pass accuracy. No United goalkeeper has averaged more uh, than 80% last season. Admittedly, we didn't see Kovar face too much when it came to uh, opposition chances, but we did see him minimising the efforts that he had to the best of his ability. He was quick off his line. We saw him come and claim crosses. Uh, we saw him seemingly commanding his area very effectively. As a defender, obviously having a goalkeeper behind you you can trust and rely on is, is a massive thing. And we've seen just in the, a short space of time the impact Onana is having on the team. Kovar had a similar, and to be fair, Tom's had not had a bad stint in there as well. The commanding element, which I think all of those three do have, uh, has been huge for them. While he was on loan at Sparta Prague, um, I thought what he was doing out there was monumental. Um, he had 29, uh, 28 games for them, um, including the championship playoff rounds. He contributed hugely to their first league title in nine years. The league went right down to the wire and it required some big, big saves um, from Kovar to take the title. Their best run saw them winning nine out of ten uh, and drawing the other game in March. And he was integral in that. And while pre-season has seen a keeper um, confident in possession and not facing too much in terms of, of shot-stopping trouble, Sparta actually saw... Kovar excel with that. That was we did a loan watch on him um, and, and spoke about that. He was getting a lot of trade as a goalkeeper, and it was his shot stopping that we saw. We didn't see him playing out when we were watching him against Sparta, uh, play for Sparta. Uh, it was the shot stopping, the the real athletic, agile shot stopping that we saw from him, and that impressed. And then he's come here, and played a couple of games in pre season. You go, what the fuck is that? Where's that been? Um, impressive. Previously, he spent time at Swindon and Burton, but he really struggled to make any sort of uh, impact. And, and that shows the importance of playing week in, week out, not having to worry about what you need to do, the performance anxiety of coming in and out of the side. Just turn up, perform, play week in, week out. The development at Sparta has been phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, and, and I think... It's eliminated some of the concerns over whether he could hack it playing in England after struggling on loan. The Czech League's a pretty physical league. Certainly not one that a goalkeeper's going to get protected. So it's interesting about what next. Um, it looks like he's going out on loan again and Sparta seems to be the spot that he's going. I think if Suzuki is brought in, he seems to be a bit of a gamble and one for the very, very future, not the immediate future. Um, like I said, I think Tom's going to stick around. How long for is anybody's guess, I, I think. He literally could still start for anyone else. So I think it's just his love for United keeping him around at this moment. Um, maybe the, the promise of you know, playing some Champions League or, or, or whatever. Um, but I, I think everyone, including Onana, has to be aware of what's going on with Kovar. Because in a few years' time... I think Onana, the transfer fee and his performances right now are going to make him number one without a shadow of a doubt. But if he has a wobble... No, I've said this to a few people, right? Bartes was a revolutionary goalkeeper. Revolutionary. And he was integral to what France did. He was integral to what Monaco did. And he was a game-changing goalkeeper. Right now, Bartes will probably be considered top three or four goalkeepers in the world comfortably. Not even a question. And in his first season at Manchester United, he was fucking dope. He was so good. And he, he come with the things that we see in Onana doing. Um, ability to play out from the back, the confidence. Fucking Cruyff turns as players are pressing him. Um, mad antics, mad confidence, mad fucking, mad way of playing the game, entertaining way of playing the game. It's everything Onana is. The problem with Bartes is the English press and the English media and a lot of United fans as well they remember the second season and the second season he was shit. I don't know what happened, but 
he started to become calamitous. The the antics lose their uh, shine when they lead to so many mistakes. You have to be successful if you're going to have the the sort of mad confidence that Bartes displayed and, and Onana displays. Um, I think Bartes is done a disservice by the English media and by English fans. Bartes was fucking incredible. Um, genuinely, genuinely, genuinely incredible. Um, and it's the second season that lets him, lets him down. And I'd love to know what happened because he was truly, truly great. And, and it... It's probably tainted the legacy of how good a goalkeeper he genuinely was because he was legit. Um, but I think there is a pathway through to Kovar becoming Manchester United's first choice goalkeeper. You know, Onana's certainly not old, um, but Kovar is younger. And, uh, you know, he has an opportunity that. If it goes the same way it went for Bartes, even if he has a season two, three, four, Kovar just needs to be there to be able to swoop in and take that off him. You can be a little bit more patient with goalkeepers because they don't get the opportunities to play as young as, as a winger or a fullback does. You don't see goalkeepers coming on and getting 10, 15 minutes the way you do with players in other positions. They have to take uh, someone's spot. And that's how it goes down. So, let me know your thoughts. I was very, very impressed with Kovar. Um, and I think he goes out on loan again. And I think Sparta Prague get a lot more United fans going, let me just have a watch of uh, how he's getting on there. Uh, because he looked dope. Um, but again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news, as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.